Hello everyone, my name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to be talking about how to factor expressions that are powers higher than x squared. So a good example of this is if I have the function x to the fourth minus 9 equals 0. And I want to factor this and eventually solve it because whenever you set something equal to 0 it, it means we're solving it. So the secret for these problems is just to treat it as if it was an x squared minus 9 equals 0 kind of problem because this factor is very easy. The factors of nine, it would either be one and nine or three and three. And this is gonna be three and three because there's no X term in the middle. <coughs> so in other words, we have the factors X plus three and X minus three equals zero. And here's the only difference. Once you get to this step, remember we changed it from X to the fourth to X squared. That means you're, instead of writing X here, you're gonna write X squared because the secret is it's always the power divided by two. So for instance, if I had x to the sixth minus nine, that would be x cubed plus three times x cubed minus three. And if for instance, I had x to the 10th minus nine, that would be x to the fifth plus three times x to the fifth minus three. And by the way, this still works for the x squared rule, if you think about it, because two divided by two is one. That's why it's x to the first power plus three times x to the first power minus three. So all these rules work. And so now let's look at some more problems on how to solve these. So actually I didn't finish the one we started with. I didn't finish this problem. We got to the point where we were at x squared plus three times x squared minus three equals zero. And the secret here is to set both factors equal to zero. You're gonna say x squared plus three equals zero and x squared minus three equals zero. If this was, like we've seen before, x plus three and x minus three equals zero, we've seen this before and we know the solutions are three and negative three immediately. And that's because these factors right here don't have x squared in them. But since this isn't what we have, we have the x squared, we can't just say x equals plus minus three. We actually have to solve it. So the left one I would solve by subtracting three from both sides, that gives me x squared equals negative three. And then when I take the square root, I've got a problem because we can't take the square root of negative numbers. At least there'll be imaginary solutions and that's not what we're talking about in this video. So I would say no solution for this one. And then for the other one, I would add three to both sides, x squared equals three. And then I take the square root, and whenever you take a square root, it's plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus the square root of three. And there's our solutions for x to the fourth minus nine equals zero. Okay? So let's do another one. Let's say for this one, I have x to the fourth plus two x squared minus 48 equals zero. So notice this one has a middle term, the two x squared. It's a good thing whenever the middle term has half the power as your leading term, because that means we can use the rule we just said. Let me say that a slightly different way. If I had x squared plus two x minus 48, this is essentially the exact same problem as what I have above, except I'm just going to put x squared instead of x for this answer. And I know my factors of 48, there's actually a lot. It's one in 48, you got 2 and 24, you've got 3 and 16, you've got 4 and 12, and last but not least, you got 6 and 8. And the secret for factoring is just looking at the middle term, it's plus 2x, and since it's minus 48, it means the two terms subtract to positive 2, which means the correct factors are 6 and 8, because 8 minus 6 is 2. So the factors will be x plus 8 times x minus 6, and remember what I'm saying, since it was x to the fourth originally, four divided by two is two, so that means the second power, just like this. And both of those equal zero. Once again, I'm gonna set both equal to zero. x squared plus eight equals zero, and x squared minus six equals zero. For the left one, subtract eight. We're gonna have the same problem we got before, because you can't take the square root of a negative number. So no solution for that one. And then for the other one, I would add six to both sides x squared equals six, take the square root, x equals plus or minus the square root of six, and there's our solutions for that one. So real quick, let me show you when you cannot use this method of factoring. You cannot use this method if, for instance, you have x to the fourth minus six x equals zero. You would not treat this like x squared minus six. 
and that's because of the 6x. If you wanted to solve this one, it's a different method entirely. I'm not going to get too much into it in this video, but what I will say is it involves factoring out the common term as the first step, x times x cubed minus 6 equals 0, and then you'd set both of these equal to 0, and you could solve from there. But again, I'm not going to do that in this video. I just wanted to show you that this is not the form that we have. This is, this is not it. What I'm saying is if you had x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 12 or something, these are the kinds of problems that we're dealing with. And now let's do one more example today. For this problem, let's say I have x to the sixth minus 4x cubed minus 1 equals 0. Again, I want to find the factors. So the first thing you should notice is that 6 x to the 6, the 6 power, then the 3rd power, then you can think of this as the 0 power. We're in the form that we want, because 6 divided by 2 is 3, so we're happy. So then if I want to try and factor this, I would treat it as if it was x squared minus 4x minus 1. I'm going to treat it like that. And you'll notice the factors of 1, there's only one pair, and you will not get this to minus 4. Which doesn't mean that there's no solution, we're not that lucky. It means that we're going to use the quadratic formula. And yes, you can use the quadratic formula with this method, and it turns out to be pretty much the exact same thing, where you're gonna say x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. In this example, a equals one, b is negative four, and c is negative one. So plugging in here, I'll get x equals double negative on the four makes it positive plus or minus Negative 4 squared is positive 16, minus 4 times a is 1, and c is negative 1, all divided by 2 times 1. That's good. So that means x equals 4 plus or minus square root of 16. Negative 4 times negative 1 is plus 4, so that's plus 4 there, all over 2. That will give me 4 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2. And this I can reduce by breaking apart the fraction. It's going to be 4 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2, which I know the square root of 20 because, well, not exactly, but I know it breaks down to 4 and 5, root 4 and root 5, and root 4 is 2, so this breaks down to 2 root 5. So this 4 divided by 2 will make 2, plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2. Those 2's cancel, and I get 2 plus or minus root 5. Another way I can write this, 2 plus root 5, comma, 2 minus root 5. And the reason I'm even writing it like this is because these are not the solutions for x. These are the solutions, remember, for x to the sixth power. And so what I need to do is when I make my factors, I need to write this. And notice what I'm going to do. x cubed minus the quantity 2 plus root 5. And then the second quantity is x cubed minus parentheses 2 minus root 5. Now, where the heck did all this come from? Well, first of all, the x cubed came from the fact that we're dealing with x to the 6th, and the 6 divided by 2 power is x cubed. That's why that makes sense. And then since these are the roots, since these are the solutions, because that's what the quadratic formula does, it finds solutions, remember that the solutions are the opposite as the factors. What do I mean by that? If I say x minus 2 equals 0, because that's a way to write a factor, if the factor was like x minus 2, for instance, then the solution is x equals positive 2. So when you write it as a factor, notice the minus. You always write minus for factors. So another example, if I had x plus 5, then equals 0, then that means x equals negative 5 is my solution. So just remember, factors are always the opposite sign, switch the positive or, or negative when it comes to the factors. So let me erase this. Now back to this part of the problem, we're still setting it equal to 0. So that means I'm going to set each one equal to 0 x cubed minus, I'm going to distribute this minus sign to both terms, so it will be x cubed minus 2 minus root 5 equals 0. And then the other one's going to be x cubed minus 2 plus root 5, because again, I distributed the negative, and the double negative on the root 5 will be positive. I'm going to set that equal to 0 as well. To solve for x here, this is not fun, but it's not too bad. You'll get a ridiculous answer. You have to add 2 and add root 5 to both sides of this first one. That means you get x cubed equals 2 plus root 5. And then you take the cube root of both sides. Now the good news about the cube root is that it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative because you don't get imaginary solutions for odd 
roots, like x cubed. And this is literally how you'd write one of the solutions in its technical term. Cube root of 2 plus the square root of 5. It looks ridiculous, but this is technically right. And in case this looks too silly for you, then we can plug it in our calculator, and that solution right there is equal to 1.62, approximately. So that's one solution for x. Then the other one comes from the fact that x cubed minus 2 plus root 5 equals 0. For this one, again, we're adding 2 and subtracting root 5 to both sides. And that will give me x cubed equals 2 minus root 5. Once again, I can take the cube root. One thing I forgot to mention, when you take a cube root, you do not do plus or minus. That's only for even numbered roots like x squared or x to the fourth. So that means we'll get a final answer here of the cube root of 2 minus square root of 5. And then once again, I'll plug this in my calculator to get this as a decimal. And we will get x equals negative 0.618 as the decimal for that one. And remember what a solution means, by the way. A solution means that if I take either of these numbers, 1.62 or negative 0.618, if I plug it in for x into this equation, then I will get 0 as a result. So let me do that real quick. If I type 1.61 to the 6th power, minus 4 times 1.61 to the 3rd power, and then minus 1, I will get an answer of negative 0.277, which I'll admit is not 0, but that's because I didn't use enough decimal places. Like the real answer wasn't 1.62, it was 1.618033989. And if you plug that exactly in your calculator, then you'll get zero. So that's gonna do it for today's video. Again, just a one minute recap. If you have x to the fourth, then that means your factors are going to be x squared plus or minus some number and x squared plus or minus some number. And this holds true no matter what the power is, you just have to divide it by two, x to the sixth x to the sixth, whatever you have. Which then brings an interesting point, what if you have an odd number like x to the fifth, then what do you do? Well, theoretically, this would be x to the 2.5 and x to the 2.5 power, but you'll never see that in your classes, so it's just some, something fun to think about theoretically. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.